Right. Well, all right, all right, all right. And welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean. That over there is Brian. And back again with us is our resident guru, Joel. Hey, how are you doing today? Fantastic, man. Fantastic. So happy to be with you guys again today. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, our latest episode of Acolyte has has dropped earlier this week. And uh, it was not a very long episode, but so far it's my favorite episode. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But uh, before we get to that... Yeah, guys, uh, we just want to thank everybody for tuning in, supporting the channel. Uh, if you want to see us grow, throw us a like, throw us a sub. Both of them are free, and it takes less than a second. Uh, if you want to stay on top of any of our unscheduled broadcasts, like uh, some of our recent stuff, make sure to turn on your alerts via notifications. Right on, right on, man. Thank you so very much. Yes, it helps. So, yeah, I mean, like, I actually went away from this episode going, okay, I liked this one as... Out of the five we've viewed so far, this <laughs> right. one's the best one for me. Um, and it's not all that great an episode. It's just out of what we got, this is, you know, so far the best for me. Now, did y'all some away? choreography, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely some lightsaber uh, battles that we've never seen before. Certainly, uh, you know. Some fan service a little bit, right? Yeah, for sure. Joel, do you think, uh, do, would you agree, yeah. like, out of the five, do, did you come away with that same feeling, or you were, were you just as blah about it as the others? Well, my, my first sentence here may help you out. Uh, um, I, I actually... I actually agree with you and I did give it some points as I went along and things right I on. saw and, and the, the, um, just, just so you understand, by the time I get to the end of my spiel, spoiler alert, I'm still a zero because it had so many negatives on the outside. <laughs> of the just, just so you know, let's just, let's okay. Just, so we know where we're my, going. Anyway. Wait, you're a zero, right not negative. Although, <laughs> although, you know, I, I do cover some things that are, that are interesting to me and, and maybe interesting to you. However, they they really, I mean, it's a pooch screw in in, in my brain. And it's it's really bad. The, the dialogue hit hit back again, and and I'm like, you know, I want to be arrested. I don't want to be arrested. I want to beat you up. I'm not going to beat you up. I mean, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to. I mean, I can't talk about the dialogue before I will go insane. But uh, oh yeah, yeah. Fair. okay, yeah. you know, dialogue is a thing in Star Wars, right? It is, but this is something else. Oh man, right. yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I'm not you, saying this is good. I'm just saying, yeah, it's been a lot of bad. Specific dialogue for me, man, would be like, uh, uh, Smile over and smile. What the hell is the guy's name? The 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 master, the uh, yeah. You know, he's going by a few different names now. It's funny you say that. Uh, the uh, <laughs> this week they came out with a uh, a toy of his helmet. They put a prototype of toy of his helmet and they put up some awkward name. I went to, I went to Wookie Putty to see if they, you know, the, the official name of the dude changed. Right. And it went from the master to this crazy name. I mean, it was something tooth, something. I mean, it was, it was nuts. Right. Uh, Wookie, Wookie didn't change it. And then I went back and looked again. And I think now he's he's even he's something new i'm gonna have to look it up to see what they've done today but i may do that live here in a minute and, and we'll we'll get a kick on it but for us it was the master you know that was the yeah. original bit uh some people call him smilo you know smilo Ren. smilo Ren, yeah, yeah well, they call him all kinds of crap so like that but people are still on the plague he right, has that right. yeah well yeah they think he's plagueis for sure and uh but he had that whole little deal where he's like i want to be free to do what i want and man i was like oh if it, if we had not known about the agenda, that would have not been that big of a deal. But having that in the back of my mind, man, just made me cringe so bad <laughs> because of the, the, the just because I knew where it was coming from, you know. But if it was if it would just been any other show I was watching and that would have been said, it would have been like, wow, man, I can, I mean, like, I kind of feel sorry for this dude and he's supposed to be the bad guy. But yeah, it kind of annoyed me. Yeah. And most people are missing the boat on this. And, and when I get to the egg, um, it's, uh, 
you know, it, it's not all polished out, but I'll, I'll give you what I got. Uh, right I was, I was, I was deep diving the egg. And, and uh, when I did, man, and I was like, ah, I got to show Sean and Brian this, this, this is, this is crazy. So <laughs> it, there, there's some stuff you're talking about right now that, uh, you know, it's all theory. Uh, however, it, it's really, well, you know, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's crazy if this stuff is happening and, and people are, are really derailed by a lot of things in this, in this particular episode, people get derailed immediately when you start watching it. But I, I don't think you, I don't think most people realize they're getting derailed while they're watching it, but I'm, I'm going to point it out a few times. You'll, you'll see. All right. Well, we know Park Clune's still alive, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even the screen rant guy, man, Jesus, I swear I to God, he's watching people. our videos. I know, right? <laughs> I do. Cheers. He, I mean, I like his stuff. I, I appreciate do. It. Yeah. I mean, like we've always talked about him in the past, but I mean, like that last yeah. one, I was like, dude, are you are, like, he was like hitting everything we were right. talking. I was like, holy crap. I think this dude yeah, watched let, our stuff. Let me bring that. Let me bring that up for you. Cause I knew, I knew you were going to say yeah, it. Let me so, bring, there it is. There you go. Yeah. And um, you're not wrong. I mean, he's, he's, is he still alive? Yeah. Did I go to Wikipedia? Uh, yeah, I had to, no choice on, on their account. You know, he died 19 BBY and sure I'll pick it up. You know, it, to me, this is, uh, this is crazy. Of course I took a screenshot just, just in case I, I wonder right, if I yeah. took a screenshot, but yeah, you know, that's just, that's part of it. And yeah, I don't know part, why they did that. It's part of my bit. Oh, why they started changing stuff instead of adding no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Why they used a guy that looks just like Plo Koon? Oh, you yeah, know? You're, not, you're not gonna like where I go with that. And I go with that. No, I'm about my third sentence here. So All you right. know, everybody's you space space let you have it. Right. I'll let you have it. <laughs> let There's me a have reason it. I have the picture. Um, so uh, basically, guys, um, I you know I am not Wikipedia, so I, I I'm gonna show you. I, I'm gonna make some corrections. An addendum. Some something about the location and a hair on the budget. Um, th here we go. The, the acolyte was shot in the United Kingdom between October 2022 and June 2023 at Shin Field, Shin, S H I N, Shin Field <laughs> Studios, around an hour outside of London. Studios uh, filming in the UK receive a reimbursement for up to 25.5% of the money they spend in the country, but they have to make a detailed financial disclosure to get that money. Uh, the pre-production cost for the Acolyte was around $48.5 million. Now, Caroline Reed over at Forbes made this article, but now the, the article she made was about the wage gap. And, and I urge you, if you want, you're interested, interested in the wage gap and you want to know about the debate there, check it out over at Forbes. What I'm going to tell you is I, I've been deep diving the money. So I, I want yeah. to see exact figures and I, I want to know exactly what's going on. And I watched this week, I watched the, the UK people realize that they paid for 25.5% of this show with their tax money. Ooh. And boy, Heidi, boy, that, that, uh, That's that, that lit up a few forums, you know, and they were like, <laughs> oh, wait, we paid for Acolyte? And I'm like, well, you paid for 25.5%. Yeah, it didn't go great. Yeah. And, and I was researching it, but, you know, it's okay. We're going to, let's move on. So just, yeah. just get that in your head for a second. You can start looking that up. Uh, to start, uh, to start with a question from Sean, which boggled his mind last week, is that Plo Koon? Yeah. And I'm showing you the picture now. Um, yep. I told you back then, no, and it's not confirmed. Let, let me show you what happened right after we shot the show. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And, and sure enough, uh, I got a notification. And uh, where is it? Oh, my God. Sorry, folks. I'm kind of discombobulated today, but I'll, I will get it. I will. Well, I'm just going to say, I don't know if I actually said it on the podcast, but I do know that in my mind, it was always like episode five. There was going to be a change. We're going to lean into JJ's character. So a little more going to find out more, more about what's not being said about him. Well, and I don't know, outside of the fight scenes in this episode, it was a waste. Yes. Everything that was said. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, Joel called right? it, man, the red shirt episode. I mean, he yeah. absolutely nailed that for sure. Like everybody got wiped out. Right. So soon, soon after you asked that question, there you go. Look, look at this. I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, so uh, the official sorry. Star Wars X account, formerly known as Twitter, confirms the Keldor Jedi is not Plo Koon. It is actually Ithia Pan. For all I know, I, I had to go. Uh, of course, I had to go. As soon as I saw this, I went to Wikipedia before they could change anything. I'm going to say that a lot. <laughs> yeah, please. You know, 
and, and they I deserve was, it. All right, all right, all right. And uh, let's go. Let me find Ithia. All right, there's Ithia. All right, so let's take a look. Here is Ithia, and look at that that sparkling information. Ithia Pond died 132 BBY on Kofar. No kidding. You, you don't say, you know, she, <laughs> she, her. She's a she, her, right? Uh -huh. So it's not even a guy. So you blow up the page well, a little more. Yeah. And I'm like, is this, uh, it, my brain goes, oh, wait, wait, wait. it's Plo Koon's grandmother. That's what's going on. I, I get it. Right. You know? that, that way I can justify it to Sean. It's, it's Plo Koon's grandmother. Okay. And, and then I'll I, take I, that. Yeah. I click it open and I look and I'm like, all right, is it, is, is uh, Ithia Pond one of the red shirts? Oh, was sure enough, you know, right down here on the end. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. So, yeah. The acolyte giveth, the acolyte taketh away. Man, <laughs> you know, I'm telling this you. Is, this is where we are with this. So that, that's so, my... Huh? Go ahead. Well, Plo Koon would have just made more sense rather than, uh, you know, the... Uh, what's it? Kiati Mundi, man. Right. I mean, it, it he, just... He would have, yeah. It, I don't know. Just simple stuff like that. Like, this is, this is why it's okay to be mad at the acolyte. You know, it, all this stuff, the the Disney stuff we talk about is all secondary. Y'all got to realize that this is the kind of stuff, the BS stuff that makes it crap. And we're talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I didn't mean to bust your bubble there and break. Your that's heart all right. It's his grandmother. I, I now. Apologize. But now I got to do it to Brian. <laughs> All right, last episode, uh, retcon happened uh, at the end of the episode, or no, didn't happen. I'm about to retcon Brian now, so <laughs> if you want to see Brian get all sad. Uh, Brian gave the show last episode half a point because he was pleased with the scene that he saw. I mean, he was happy. He was happy. I knew that was coming. Got. He knew. Yeah. You know, it was good. All right, well, <laughs> the series was initially reported to be using visual effects company, industrial light and magic stagecraft technology. This mm -hmm. is what we call the volume. Yeah. But Brian brought it up and said, hey, I think this is just cloud cover covering this. And I'm, and you'll hear me say, I, I'm not sure that oh. that's the volume. I, I checked what I said. I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Right. So uh, they, they shoot that in front of a digital background on a video wall, uh, as was done for The Mandalorian and its spinoff series. Hadlin has come out to say that the series was primarily filmed on practical sets and did not use the technology for creative and logistical logistical reasons. That has been mm -hmm. updated on the wiki. And so Brian's half a point. The acolyte giveth, the acolyte taketh away. Oh, again. <laughs> yeah, so that's, Twice that, in our episode. Right. Yeah. So that's that's two that's two retcons that have hit you two. Before we even start, I haven't even read the starter line. So yeah, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about uh, boys and your, your half points you gave or your whole points you gave they just got they just got blown out of the water. I want to go back yeah, and give them all cool zero. So, you know, we went over that you a cool shot is not worth a point, right? I don't well, think it's worth a point. No, right? definitely not. Not not to save a whole episode. Hell no. Yeah. No. And, and they need and, all the uh, help they can get. And and this episode itself is is truly devastating for a lot of people, especially when I read off some of this stuff. But uh all right, look, when the last episode ended last week, well, I, I know about the duality. So I, I just pretty much edit copy, edit paste. I, I literally do. I control C and then control V, all my stuff, and then put it over there, and then I plug it with everything in the new copy, right? No, no yeah. big deal. And I know the last episode's name is day. It's not put up anywhere. The name is not put up anywhere. I immediately type, Oh, night, you know, I'm the red shirt episode night. Yeah. I'm just starting to guess. I'm just right. starting to fan not fiction. Hard. My, I mean, it's not a guess. guess, right? Hey, I, we we oh, were like that. It's, 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 a good guess. it's like, yeah, I mean, Sean's pointed it out. So, uh, when I read this to you, I mean, you'll you'll see what I mean. I'm like, uh, the last episode was extremely short, and we pointed out how short it was. I wanted people to understand they're not even talking about that this episode. You don't think that this episode was one giant fight scene? You'd be wrong. I mean, there's a bare bit of dialogue inserted here and there. You don't want to hear it. I guarantee you don't want to mm -hmm. hear that dialogue. You don't really care to hear that dialogue. Nope. The you can imagine all that dialogue after watching the previous episode. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. The Acolyte, episode five, night. All night. right. Yeah. The air date was Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. I'm going to do it again. 
32 minute 20 second total runtime one minute 22 second intro three minute 45 second outro five minutes seven seconds total actual runtime 27 minutes 53 seconds last episode was 27 minutes 30 seconds that's right folks they give you an extra 23 seconds on this show of hey, action-packed woo-hoo. fighting man 180 million woo-hoo. all right now I have to give an award to IMDb. Every time I read this IMDb sentence, it's a pleasure to read it. It really is. Oh, my God. What a hell of a sentence. (laughs) This time, Brian, don't look it up, Brian. I know Brian's looking it up. He's he's, he's, he's in the case. Don't look it up. My brain. I just want to hear it. Yeah, my my brain went straight to Don LaFontaine. I was like, oh, my God, Don LaFontaine. If you don't don't know who Don LaFontaine is, my God, look that up. Please. He is like the, you know, voice voice actor. The golden voice so let, let me do, <clears throat> let me get up here to this, this beautiful microphone. <clears throat> here we go, folks. In a dense jungle, the Jedi are put to the test when the con- when they confront a rising darkness. I even screwed it up. It's, it's in, it's <laughs> in a, I'm, I'm no Don Lafontaine. Are you crazy? In a dense jungle, the Jedi are put to the test when the, con- when they confront a rising darkness. It's hard to say that sentence, but my God. Yeah, it really, in, in a world, I was thinking, oh, no. In a dense now, jungle. Yeah, it's in a dense jungle. The Jedi are put to the test when they confront a rising darkness. And I was like, this is, <laughs> is brilliant. You know, I, I think I had it right this time. Scott. All right, so j- just for, for fun <laughs> sake, and, and I mean, I, I love I loved the I love this short sentence. It is a short sentence. It's fantastic. It's kind of a tribute to me, to Don. Don passed away in 2008. Uh, God rest his soul. Um, however... I'm looking at this, and whoever wrote this at IMDb, it, it is so meaningful to me. In a dense, you chose the word dense, really? In a dense jungle? I was thinking to myself, well, you ain't wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's everybody in the in the jungle. Guess what? They're dense. <laughs> I mean, this is this is crazy. But I, I wanted to point it out and, and talk about Don for a second. But yeah, that's it. In a dense jungle, the Jedi are put to the test when they confront a rising darkness. IMDb. Thumbs up from me, buddies. Good stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for me, there's only there's really only a couple of points that that really stand out. Most of the other channels are going to cover some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to tell you from my wife and my point of view. Uh, we did a lot of laughing, and it was it was like the Benny Hill yeah. comedy hour. Uh, and we're not really cruel people, but some of it was really funny. There was some teleportation going on. There was some. I was like, whoa, you know, that's some crazy stuff was happening. The wife and I really enjoyed Lost, and I don't know if anybody saw Lost. Never watched but, it. Oh my god! It, I'm okay. glad I didn't. Okay, Game of Thrones and Lost share something, not to mention just the writers. Uh, But Lost, this was after Alias. This was J.J. Abrams. You know, big thing was, I think, Felicity. And then J.J. went to uh, Alias with Jennifer Garner. And then he went on to uh, Lost. And he he got in uh, Damon and, and the writers. Anyway, the opening shot of this is from Lost. And it's unconventional. It is a spiral Dutch that is supposed to create a feeling of disorientation, maybe even a uh, slight euphoria. But when JJ did this, it was considered edgy and and you know similar to what the, they did with uh, Star Trek having the uh, the flashlights in the seventy thousand dollar plus lenses to make sun flares, and oh, and JJ yeah. walking around going, "Oh, we're gonna do more practical effects." And we've heard this from Headland, and I'm like, "Oh no!" So uh, to see who she's like, uh, you know, I don't know, putting on the on the mantle there, if you want to call it, and emulating. And yeah, paying. Yeah, I wouldn't call it paying homage because it's not done great. But the uh, it's a disorientation scene in the in the very beginning, and you you can't miss it. But it's not the only one. So I put on here. Some people, of course, did not care for the effect. Um, in this episode, it kind of felt gimmicky to me. I did not tell the wife about it as it passed by. Um, usually, you don't do this. You start with a, an establishing shot. And then you go to a medium or, you know, something else. You don't do this. Uh, so I, I, I would I would normally say I could believe that this was intentional, perhaps some kind of tribute as we were talking about a second ago. I don't know, though. A few more things in this show are exact replicas from other shows and movies. And for me, I start to get that 
and I mean, here we go. Fire in space. We're, we're, and I do get a fire in space in this episode. And my God, I can't believe I did. But I'm going to show it to you. Uh, but it, it's basically, it starts to feel like edit copy, uh, edit, copy, edit, paste is going on again. And yeah. I'm like, really? Not, not again, you know? And, and I, I don't think chat GPT was a thing at the time because this was shot 2022, as I told you up, up top. So I don't think it was a thing. Uh, I, I think chat GPT has developed since then. I don't think that was used uh, heavily on this. And you're going to start, we're going to start seeing scripts that are, are some, some AI usage. We, we just are, it's just going to happen. You're going to start Definitely. seeing articles from critics that are AI usage. You're Absolutely. not going to be able to miss it. You're going to see keywords in those articles that are going to say, Oh my God, I think they let AI write this and they got paid for it or something. It's going to be crazy. It's we're, we're, we're entering a, a new, it's going to be a crazy oh, world. Right. So I wouldn't talk about that opening shot, but it is from Lost. It is J.J. Abrams. Uh, the wife and I completely watched Alias. We completely watched Lost. Uh, we didn't care for the end of Alias. We didn't care for the end of Lost. And then when the writers did that season eight of Game of Thrones, thank God you haven't seen it, Sean. Season eight of Game of Thrones was despicable. to I, I mean, a lot of people on this planet. So I'm kind of glad they kind of phased out, <laughs> you know, yeah. and we don't hear we don't hear J.J. Abrams anymore. But whew, this whole episode has the Lost Island feel to it to me the yeah. whole episode. i had that kind of feeling too like it was I a lost was like, island oh but, no i'll tell you what though dude man that 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 uh dude playing the master man is fucking ripped on the arms man i right. want my arms to look like that bro <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah, i mean man, holy man. shit yeah, man, he works out. He, yeah, he, he does, man. He eats that protein cricket powder. <laughs> and, no doubt. White. white. You know, it's it's really easy good. to overlook him being the partner in some of the best choreography in this, right? Well. Am I wrong? I don't know. I didn't get I to see tell. his physique before then. Yeah. But, I mean, we get to see him uh, obviously dance around all the red shirts, but also engage with uh, Soul and... I don't know. I, I I like what I saw of that. It was something different. Screen Crush also mentioned in another video they did about him having uh, being like his uh, oh shit that show he was on, like, a good place. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you know, I mentioned that last episode or whatever that I thought his character was a lot like that. I was wondering if his range could be any better than just doing that character, and he's actually proved yes, he can because. While that character, his bumbling character, his Clark Kent character, you know, um, was a lot like it. This master, the the evil side of him is not at all. It was it was very cool. Like he was the best part of it. Yeah, yeah in my probably opinion, so. probably so. I don't yeah. know. I like Daphne Keen's stuff too. Oh, oh, dude, yes. And I'm glad you brought that up. That that. So for his dark side, he was the best part of the dark side. Like the other two, I don't know what they're going to end up doing, but. But Jackie, I thought was awesome. I hated that she got killed, but did she? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I see that stuff popping up all of a sudden. Everybody's like, did she really die? Really? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I mean, they killed what's her name it's with just a butter a knife. Directly through your body. I mean, <laughs> Carrie Ann Moss got killed with a butter knife. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, I mean, I don't know anymore, man. They, they want to make all these claims. Oh, well, she only got hit in certain areas. Ugh. Come on, man. I mean, if they're killing off Carrie Ann Moss with a butter knife, then Jackie's dead. Sorry. Jackie's dead. Yeah. Made it for y'all. Yeah, Don't expect I, her to come that. back. I, I do believe although, she's dead. <laughs> wait. Now, why would he do it? But although, if this is Darth Plagueis, he could heal her and bring her back. Uh, but she why took, would he do took, that? She took spinal damage. Dude. She's gone. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she, the girl's dead, man. These guys that think she's, she's coming back, man, are smoking the hopium. Right. Oh, real, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, and whose decision was it to let Yord walk through the jungle with his lightsaber out? Oh man! The well, they had, I mean, that's the whole thing. Is make your make Yord look like the dumb male. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, he's got yeah. to be the stupid male. So yes, that's why he's walking through the damn forest with his with his giant flashlight. Well, it's not just that, but you know, just the idea of like 
that there's no production sense in doing that, right? I mean, if you want to attract those bugs, it makes sense because it did attract those bugs, right? I mean, that's no, it didn't because she touched the she touched the tree and that attracted the bug, or she took the touched the bug and then that attracted it after they saw the light. So maybe the light's okay. You know, using a lightsaber. So I don't know. I don't know. know. Want to tell it. Every time it hits a leaf, that leaf needs to burn, right? We should. We I don't should, know. We I, should, you should let me get through like the next bit, and and then we can it. really have a conversation about it. Uh, All right, you do you know, that. I, I want you to make sure you understand on my screen, and maybe you can see it. See how this comes in pieces. See how this helmet comes in pieces. Yeah, looks like he All made right. it out of a bunch of scrap metal. Yeah, and we're we're going to talk about this. This is probably. And I don't know that it's forged. It might be compressed this way. But it's and not Beskar. Right. It could but it's be. another. Oh, I mean, it could be parts it of be Beskar, but it's going to be yeah. a bunch of other. There's not Beskar is not the only thing that's impervious to lightsabers. It's which got I'm name. sure you're about right. to tell yeah. us. Yeah, there's, there's several. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, just so you know, it, this is, you know, whether they're breaking canon or not this 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 time around, I don't know. I don't think so. You know, I mean, it, technically, they, they kind of are. Technically, they kind of aren't. And that, why is that? Because nobody says this word. And, and I'm tired of saying this word and, and looking up this word. And, and I've been doing it for about a week. So I'm going to give you the most pertinent paragraph I can possibly give you. And here, here it goes. Um, the, this is the first live action appearance of a material called cortosis. They don't say it's cortosis. We don't know it's cortosis. That doesn't sound like iron or, you know, platinum or something like that. It, it is. It sounds like some kind of alchemical thing to me. I mean, it's, it's cortosis. This is like, really? Like sounds like a bad disease really? to me. Right. Yeah, yeah. So cortosis. This is I a creation touch of the cortosis. Well, just put some salve on it, buddy. You'll be all right. Yeah, it'll be all right. Just fix that up right there. That's how you do it. Uh, a creation of Michael A. Stackpole. And he did this back in 1999. So if this is cortosis, okay, well, it's part of the classic. So that was in the comics, classic, right? you know, it's part of the classic. What, what, Brian? That was in the comics? No, 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 no. Uh, Michael A. Stackpole uh, created this in 1999. And um, let me read that to you. This is from the book, I, Jedi. I, Jedi. Okay. I come a Jedi. It's the dramatic story of an X-Wing pilot on the razor's edge between the hero he once was and the power he could have if he's willing to embrace the dark side. And that's from Amazon. That's not from Wikipedia. I loved it. I got to use Amazon and not Wikipedia. That felt so good. All right. In an oh. X-Wing. <laughs> right. Cortosis fibers are found in this book, I, Jedi. Uh, I, Jedi was published before the video game Jedi Outcast or KOTOR, which uh, KOTOR is not. Knights of the Old Republic for the the, the newbies. Um, Yeah, or the uh, Thrawn duology, which came out later. So this is the origin. The origin of of Cortosis came from uh, Stackpole uh, way back in 1999. So I'm cool with that. However, they didn't mention that it was. But so we have to assume a certain level here that Cortosis is a thing. All right. Well, it's been in video games, been associated with me. It was a big deal in KOTOR Kotor in the video game. Uh, I mean, you got to modify stuff and use stuff. Uh, However, it's like uh, it's suggested that Cortosis weave armor isn't exactly 100% cortosis. This armor could deflect lightsabers, but the problem is cortosis is very brittle. So it's like rust, you know, like rust, really? Mm. Or like a uh, uh, coal, you know how coal's flaky mm-hmm, and got mm-hmm, a bunch mm-hmm. of levels to it? It's, yeah. it's, it's similar to that. And, That's and, what his helmet looks like. Right, 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 right. So, so you're, when you're looking at this, you're trying to say, okay, well, it's kind of rust. It's rusty, you know, and people, some people are talking about it. Some people are not, but I have to pull this information from, I had to look at original source material to see what was, what was a uh, Stackpole's original idea for cortosis. And I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go to Wikipedia and go, Hey, I'm going to use this now. I, I, I don't think I will, you know, that's how I feel. Um, <laughs> so cortosis is very, very brittle. It's a flaky material. Similar to what uh, rust in its fragility, uh, the closer now this is crazy, the closer to the raw ore variant uh, the material is, the more deadly it is to be around or handled. Think like worst level asbestos, asbestos, radiation, uh, gonna kill you, that kind of thing. And and I'm like, really touching your skin is a problem. And, and we see it in these fight scenes. Uh, we see it. Um, 
touching Chimere. His bracer is super tight on his left arm, and it's it's the same material, and it's real c- close to his skin. Uh, the helmet appears to be made of the, of the same material, and uh, the helmet itself is not secure on his head. And if you if you really slow down some of the footage, and when he does some of these spins around the spin arounds, you'll see the hel- the helmet kind of bounce. Yeah, it's yeah. like you got yeah. geophysics in the head. What's yeah. going on with you, buddy? So somebody couldn't stick foam up under there to give him a For solid real. helmet feel under there. And I was like, uh, okay, well, this is just crazy, but I'm, I'm moving on. But uh, uh, yeah, w- when we do get to see inside his helmet, because the, the helmet is brittle and it comes apart, it, it does not appear to have any kind of interior guard for the back of the neck or the chin area. Um, the helmet has a single hinge in the back where it can be opened. Um, and I've got, a, I got a couple of pictures of the helmet. I think uh, when, I think Manny's picking it back up. No, he's carrying it in, in this shot, so you can see it because people, you know, people don't take it and pause. But I think this is after Jackie does her head bash right. and uh, knock. You know, is when I uh, when these pictures came up. Uh, and these, this is later in the episode. So uh, she was so badass. Me. Yeah, she she was pretty cool. Um, now I, told you, I knew I had a feeling, and you you were so sad that I said it, but I just had a feeling that something was going to be really badass about her. Right, right. Well, now we get to the weird parts. Yeah, all that stuff I can prove about cortosis. I can look at the lore, and I was I was deep diving into cortosis. I'm kind of glad, you know, I'm done deep diving into cortosis. But it's a thing. Is it in this show? I don't know, but I I can tell you, for instance. It would be probably retconned because Stackpole, that book, I Jedi, it's got Luke Skywalker in it. I mean, the mm. book has Luke Skywalker in it. So you, you, you plan that accordingly, you know, but they've added Cortosis to Legends materials, video games, blah, blah, blah. So th- this is Disney add- add ons, is what we're seeing. So yeah, well, I mean, obviously it was in more popular video games, but the Thrawn novels were more popular than that novel. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the Thrawn du- duology, super, super popular. All right. All right, here's where we get weird. And I'm just guessing, guys. I don't want to say nothing. I, at this point, either either there's a whole lot of edit, copy, edit, paste going on in this episode. Or, and, and think about this, no chat GPT. So where do you pull this fan fiction entertainment from? And I start to go, okay, well, maybe she took a look at uh, Marvel. And I was like, no. So we felt like Nightcrawler teleporting. I, I got the Magneto helmet that read my mind. I don't want you to read my thoughts. And I'm yeah, like, which really? I'm glad you brought that up, by the yeah. way, because how the hell is he doing his mind stuff if he's got that helmet on? It's it's a load, I think, sir. I think I think all that part. And, oh, oh, there's one more thing. Um, Doctor Strange has a wonderful cloak. I mean, it's an amazing cloak. It's it's, it's pretty much uh, what do you call it? It's not inanimate. Is it animate? Yeah, it's a uh, it's its own intelligence. Animated. It, it, animated. It's, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's well, go. Yeah, that. but it's uh, sentient. It's sentient. That's a great word. Yeah. So you you know nobody's mentioning this shot. Guess what happens in this shot? And I was looking at it going. Uh, how did that happen? This is basically that stun gun hitting right, and he absorbs Manny. it. And yeah, and I'm like, really? You took it in the cloak? So I, I don't. And the only reason I say anything about the cloak is because at one point, you know, Saul's got a saber up, and he spins his cloak off and throws it at Saul. And I'm like, right. okay, well, am I am I watching Doctor Strange? Am I watching X Men? You know, what, what's going on here? And, yeah. and, I, and my brain goes, edit, copy, edit, paste. And this is yeah. how this got written. This Let's pick fantasy. the best parts of all the Disney yeah. IPs. If I was Kevin Feige, I'd be looking at this episode going, uh-huh, sure. You didn't get any, you, did you get any inspiration from me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. But my, my brain has a hard time with it. So let's get back on. Let's get back on target. Um, Stay on target. Right. Yeah, let's let's uh, let me try to get this is the the crazy the crazy scene everybody talks about and the one that everybody loves. This is where the you know, we got the Jedi here on the left and we got a Jedi behind him, and he's oh, coming yeah. in for the the headbutt and the uh, and we'll see how that goes. Well, let's see. I've tried to slow it down so you can see the sparks. So think of this as some of that helmet is brittle and breaking off, and the rust is causing that to short out. Yeah, it's pretty so, damn cool. Right, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, well, all right. So 
Uh, does this break canon? Uh, no, I'll give it to you. You're just stealing from yeah, it's spells, though. And, teetering know, on the edge yeah. of a of a yeah, razor blade it, with cannon. It really doesn't, you know. I'll give it to you. Okay, sure. And I, I move on to the next one. And I'm like, yeah, these are really cool looking, you know. Blah blah blah. And and and, and he like he does a, a cool. It, some of the fight scene portions are really cool. I mean, I like them. They're oh, really yeah. good. Uh, but it's the best part. Right, but we're not explaining the whole this, and and I can't tell you, you know, whether this happened or not, and and man, I I hate to have to point this out, uh, you know, I, I can let me let me show it to you. So yeah, just uh, show it to us. I'm just gonna show it to you. So um, you you know, this is a uh, uh, so long, see ya, bye, Plo Koon. Yeah, yeah, not Plo Koon. Yeah, no, it's it, yeah. So it's Plo Koon, just just say Plo Koon's grandmother. Plo Koon's yeah, right. grandmother. You killed Plo Koon's grandmama. You, you bastard. Know? Yeah, bastard. All right. So uh, in and this is the oh, I'll show you this. This is the scene that you can find. This is where he kicks Osha and he fl flings her across. You'll see the helmet when he does that spin to the straight to the camera lens. You'll see the helmet go, you know. So it's like a it's like a jiggle physics helmet. It, it forgot to put padding in. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Cine. And then like of course, uh, yeah. yeah. The scene you're talking about is this one where uh, Jackie. Uh, you see the helmet starting to come apart. You yep. see the two parts, and uh, we showed. I showed you earlier with the clip there about the helmet coming out. And then uh, once the helmet hits the ground, I had to find it. Uh, there it is. It's in two parts. And yeah. later in the episode, he only picks up this part. So he leaves this volatile rust material that can probably kill, you know, the entire population. He just leaves it laying on the ground. <clears throat> and I'm like, yeah, great. Uh, fantastic. Wonderful. Super. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's nutty. <laughs> now the uh, uh, gearhead in you might say, you know, uh, Leslie Headlands at one point, and I didn't, I didn't pull up the quote exactly, and and I don't know that I really have to. You can look it up, and you can see it. But Headland said, uh, basically tortured, and I, we may have talked about it. She tortured her props department when she was talking about a lightsaber, and the, most of us had thought, okay, well, it's the whip. You know, uh, the, the props department said, hey, lightsabers don't work that way. Uh, this is not going to be mechanically possible. And she was like, right. I've got to make it work. I, I don't think it was the whip that she was talking about. I think it was, uh, and it, you want to call this a Shinto. I mean, there's a name for it, but I'm not going to use it. To me, it's 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 so bad. Uh, but it's, it's cool, but it's bad at the same time. But uh, I, I've got it. I've got it to where you can... You can check it out, maybe. Let's see. Hey, before work. you change that picture, go back to that oh. picture just a second before you yeah. go on with your thing. It kind of looks like the Iron Man helmet. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, again. When, it, when it's in disrepair and coming apart. It, yeah, it, yeah, just the yeah. front part of it there. Uh, and just imagine the, the smiley part. Just look past the smiley part, yeah. right? Well, if yeah. anything, that would be more Ultron, right? A little bit like Ultron and uh, uh, Iron Man, like mixed together. Yeah. Uh, again, an, <clears throat> Feige would be upset if he uh, actually thoroughly looked at this episode. I believe. Uh, in yes. Any case, uh, I yeah. Concur. Yeah. So he has to unscrew it, and I'm like, I, really? You got to unscrew? Why did I concur? <laughs> you couldn't have had a release button or something, or no? Yeah. He's got he's to unscrew it, and I'm like, well, that's kind of cool, I guess. And then the sequence of events for that. Uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, he pulls it apart. He uh, let's see, see. I didn't even see him pull it apart. Like I thought he pulled it yeah. out of his cloak as another saber, like a little no, dagger saber. No, it's the back end, and I think that's what I'm pretty sure that this is what the crew probably told her. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the crew. This could be that thing that that they were like, "Hey, you know, lightsabers don't work that way. You got to have a kyber crystal in here. We've got to have that to get the uh, the bleed effect, for instance." Boy, that's a whole other episode. We don't even right. talk about how to make the how to make how the to make it red. Over. We brought no. it up though. Yeah, yeah we, I can talk about it, but we, we don't need to talk about this episode. No, no, yeah. no. But the uh, yeah, the uh, I mean, this is cool. I mean, this is it great, is cool. It's a cool idea. This could be something the props department probably told her. Eh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know, da -da 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 -da. I mean, um, can we just stop and go back to that just for one second? Because all, sure. I, all I want to say is like, it's already established how this should work, right? It just comes apart right it's like a twist or whatever and then like the the small part comes out of the other end this has been established with with other tools that are in the universe already 
such I, as Darth Maul. Yeah, Darth Maul, but it was a hell of a lot bigger. I mean, it's literally two sabers put together. Yeah, right. Just, but you just, just have like an extra long hill that uses, I can't remember the stance, I'm, but it's a specific stance. Look, look at that. I maintain they can do it. Look if you look at the there. size of Yoda's saber and that saber, I think you can do it. But he has to have two crystals and he has to do the two bleeding. Like if Joel was explained that, uh, not this episode, but when y'all do finally hear it, right. like, yeah, having two red crystals is probably not going to happen. Right. right. Now, this is a good shot, although you can see the, the Shinto or whatever they're calling it, the detachable blade. Um, the You can see this sucker is strapped. I mean, it is touching his skin. It's a flat yeah. plate of the material. So it, technically, does that mean that this dude is immortal? I don't know. I don't know if they're going to hit the lore of Cortosis because the more raw it is like this with that more powder, the more it does, really. I mean, I didn't know right. I have well, no idea. Wait, if it's Plagueis again, if it's Plagueis, then he can just heal himself, right? Yeah, it's a possibility. And then I tried to blow it up a little bit from there to give you more detail, but it is basically a pile of rust, and it's got a bunch yeah. of flakes coming off. And you really can't – this is one of those blink-and-you-miss-it moments. So if you don't slow it – I mean, I, I could show you the footage. Yeah, because I never could get a good look at it. That's awesome. Right? Yes, and, and I don't think anybody else was getting it, but uh, – <laughs> I'm wondering yeah, that, if maybe the black spots that were all over his arm are a sign of this having an effect on him, right? You know, I, was I thought it was that. just dirt. Yeah, yeah, that's I, I thought that at first do. too. But as I hear about this, well, okay, and maybe it's not dirt. But I was like, one of the pictures Joel had up of, of dude, um, it looks like his neck was all blacked out, like you know the yeah. guys from Slipknot do or whatever. So maybe right. he just blacks out his whole body, and with all the right. sweat and stuff, it was just rubbing off. And by the time we saw him and he had the helmet off, like most of it was rubbed off. I think that's what was going on. Okay. Uh, I could be wrong. No, I, I mean, who knows? Yeah, they don't talking. really explain, so you could be 100% accurate. Right. But I noticed that he doesn't have it on his neck in, in, in that part, and it was clearly like completely black in that picture. I was just noticing it, and I didn't even right. notice it in the show. Okay. Now, now, okay, so so far, not breaking canon. I'm okay. I, I'm good. I'm good. Now, a little bit more research down the line, I came across this, and and this this goes to the line in the show, which we, we talked about dialogue, but I, I'm going to talk about a piece of dialogue here. I, I totally apologize. I'm fixing to talk about a piece of dialogue from the Acolyte. All right, here we go. This scene, or this this guy saying he's a Sith, is probably inaccurate. This is some of the Cortosis deep dive. This was from CBR.com. Um, they are considered kind of like Sith. And he does say in the show, you can, you could call me Sith. I call me. Or you might right. call me, right? Yeah. However, I think Manny's blurted out on some interview. He's like, yeah, I'm a Sith. And I'm like, well, okay. So this, this doesn't matter. But how cool this would have been. It's the Jin Sarai. And it's it's uh, you can't really see it, see it there, but it's the Jin Sarai uh, viewed viewing viewed the crafting of their signature armor in the same way that Jedi Padawan viewed the construction of a lightsaber. Uh, they often went with like uh, uh, animals, you know, like a rhinoceros horn type. But I mean, you know, tiger teeth, things like that. Animalistic looking armor. But this armor, if you scroll down, uh, Jin Sarai. Uh, and you can look them up. They were often referred to as Sith. Jen Sarai were often referred to as Sith. It took a basic armor template, customized it to reflect an animal species capable of defending themselves through lethal means. This was a direct nod to their balanced, balanced view of the Force, which is the way his character is playing. I, I'm looking for a balanced view of the Force. I want to be free. I want to be free to be able to do what I want to do. You know, I hear it. The armor could even be outfitted with claws or secondary weapons to fit the wearer's particular style finally all armor sets were constructed using a weaves of cortosis a rare a rare material material capable of deflecting lightsaber strikes now here's where we get wonky and and i'm like really man this is this is looney tunes it's almost I like can't. mandalorian in a way a mandalorian right. jedi Right. So and and they just did all that. I mean, who who didn't? I mean, I, most of us enjoyed those scenes with the armor smith and Mandalorian. That was mm -hmm. that was kind of a guy thing. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And uh, you know, here they just uh, oh, hey, this is the first appearance of Cortosis. So we're just gonna we're just gonna skim by it. Hey, you see this Jedi fighter? Just ignore it. It's gonna fly by. <laughs> you know, this is the this is the kind of show we're getting. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe it doesn't matter to you, but it, it matters to us. I'm looking for the powers of this helmet. And I'm like, really? You, 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 there, there is nothing. 
There's literally nothing. The, the deepest I've found was uh, telepathy, te telepathy has always been around. Telekinetic ability, sure, that's even in lore too. When, him, when he was uh, gliding down uh, in the end of the last episode, he glides down behind her. They shot that in reverse, by the way, if, if you didn't know. They, they pulled him up into the ceiling and you see Osha breathing, you know, and, and, and then it was played forward. And so they, they did that. And that was done by Count Dooku in the comics. And, and OK, it's in there. It's lore. It's canon. He can glide. I, I'll give him that. Hey, OK, I'm moving on. <sighs> this they, they had a perfectly good opportunity. This is lore and it's in there. They could have said Cortosis weave. They could have had the deflection of lightsabers uh, to be able to short a lightsaber out. That's one thing to be able to block uh, these are the these aren't the droids you're looking for. You know, th to be able to block that. Well, to be able to block that kind of thing, which has been around. Um, yeah, this helmet is uh, -uh is a, a no no, and and it has to be a creation from the show at this point. I cannot find you know, and I've been looking. I've been looking for a week. Uh, I cannot find anything. The best I can do is they don't call it telepathy and telekinetic ability, uh, like the, the glide. They, they refer to things as like uh, telepathy in Star Wars is called second sight. And that's, uh, you know, that, uh, OK, well, that's it's heard same. that before. If, if, if you read it, it's the same thing. It's, it's telepathy, but they call it second sight. There's nothing. And you can go as deep as you want. And, and, and I was getting deeper on it, but uh -uh. it just that that helmet. And I'll, I'll pull it back up. This helmet. Now, now, you know, that's as detailed, boys, that's as detailed as I can get on Cortosis and the, the first live action appearance. I can't tell you if it's canon or breaks canon, but whew, I mean, that's that's a mouthful. And I know it was a lot and I, I was going to trim it down a little bit. But hey, a lot <laughs> of people, yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't talk about um, that kind of detail. And yeah. I, I'd really rather our listeners, you know, you don't have to look all this stuff up. I just did it. I, I did it a few hours every day. Uh, but I'm tired of talking about cortosis. And I don't even know that it is cortosis at this point because it's it does some magically delicious things. Yeah, so I, 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 I can't tell you. I can't tell you that that's it. It'd be nice if they would just use some of the stuff that's out there rather than try and retcon stuff and, and do it their way. But oh, no, yeah. that's that's entirely too easy. And, and uh, ooh, um, as far as anything else goes, I've got an I've got an egg for you, but uh, we'll, we have to go through the process of basic fact checking. And I'm like, OK, basic fact checking. What is that? So this is Google. This is called Google, folks, Google. And if you put in there, how hot is a lightsaber? Before <laughs> you get a, a, a freaking result, you get 20,000 to 25,000 degrees Celsius. So, uh, all right, well, you know, not everybody's a Celsius head. So uh, we'll go to Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, it's likely 60 to 69 to it's summer. It's summer here. It's likely 69 to 75 degrees in your home right now. Just so you can get a, a general scope of what I'm about to tell you, 25,000 degrees Celsius is 45,032 degrees. It's hot. That's pretty hot. It's, hot. it's, it's yeah. amazingly hot. Damn hot. Yes. And, and, and I know other people have pointed out, and like I said, this, this whole episode is the edit, copy, edit, paste episode. Feel free to watch The Parent Trap. And I know Gary at Nerdrotic has brought it up. I, I know people have brought it up. And, th and that's fine. And, and I'm going to show you anyway. The uh, And I'm not going to show you The Parent Trap, but that, that is a Disney property. Oh, this hey, thing. Hey, get, get this, dude. Lost is ABC. That's a Disney property. It's their property. They can have it. You know, and I was, I was going to tell you about something amazing, something amazing that's never happened before. And I don't think, in, and I was looking it up at the time, but yeah, you're getting his neck snapped. It's probably because he's a guy because, you know, headless oh, sure. kill yeah. off the guy, but he's, he's a knight. He's, he's trying to be honorable. He's kind of like a paladin. He's kind of like a paladin, Yeah. but he gets his neck snapped and I'm looking, wow, has Disney ever given six to 12 year olds a neck snap? And right. I, I looked it up and, and I, it didn't lead down the road. I thought it was going to lead down and I have never seen a neck snap in a Disney movie and I couldn't find a lot of information on it. Here's what I could find. Ichabod Crane. And I was thinking Johnny Depp and Sleepy yeah. Hollow. Okay. Pirates of the Caribbean. He's on the gallows yeah. and he might have his head come off. Did they show it? Did they go into it? No, not really. 
That's what, what I was hoping this? she was going to do with her thing yeah. was cut her own head off. Right. <laughs> a lot of people were probably thinking that. But uh, just 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 so you understand, when I wanted to show you this, I was like, really? Even a simple Google search said 45,032 degrees? Okay. And then what does she do? Well, she puts you know, it right next to her face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, let me let me show you how close she puts it to her face. Let me put it like, in between. Like the close, and then closer, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, Look yeah, there it is. Her head. Holy Jesus. Right? Are you kidding and then, and me? This, this redemption, the redemption shot. I and we all know me. how fast hair, you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then of course people are pointing out, man, I can you imagine how that smells? I, I don't remember where I heard that first oh, word I first know. from. Jesus. But can it, I bet it smells bad, burnt hair at, at that kind of that kind of temperature. And Blech. it is a cauterizing weapon and, and that sort of thing. But uh yeah, I, I had to bring it up. I was like, really? They they did cut their hair in the parent trap, which is a Disney movie, but back in the sixties, they did it again with Lindsay Lohan. I think that was Lindsay Lohan's uh initial <laughs> starring role. I think that was her first movie when she yeah, was a yeah. little, little girl. Yeah, did, they yeah. cut her hair. Wasn't it called they Freaky Friday or something, Lou? I was thinking Freaky Friday, but it's not. It's it's Parent Trap that cuts the hair and then the girls switch place so they get to oh, live just with the Lindsay mom Lowe, and the dad yeah. in, the, in the other way. But uh, it is a thing, and, and, and so it's a Disney thing. Edit copy, edit paste. I was like, oh, wow. And then they traded places. Boy, they just um, got it all in this episode, didn't they? That's what I'm saying. I was like, really? You're going to edit, copy, edit, paste this whole... If this is like phoned in. If I sit here and point out the individual scenes, it gets worse. If I if I parallel Lost to the show, it gets worse. And I don't want to go into all of it and say how bad it was, because it was it was bad. And and like I said, I was willing to give it a point for the fight scenes. I thought the choreography was good. I was I was I was happy with it. I was fantastic. I didn't really want to get you to the the theory of oh my god, it's all edit copy edit paste. We're we're in deep trouble, you know. And 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 I know Brian and I think it's throwaway. And and I I know it probably is throwaway. Well, <laughs> speaking of points, let's yeah. get to that point and yeah, let's zero throw some me. stars so, on it. Nice yeah, zero for you. Well, it has to be a zero for me because I gave it points for the fight scenes and I gave and they it points took it for away, the loss. Yeah. And then they, the acolyte giveth and they the acolyte taketh away. away. So if you haven't yes. learned anything from me this episode, it is edit, copy, edit, paste, you know, and I'm like, really? Okay, well, I was going to give it to you. I was going to say, hey, man, this is fine, but no, thanks. I'm good. I'm back to it. I'm back to a zero. All right, Brian. Uh, I don't know. Uh Probably the same. Uh, I, I would like to say that I think whoever choreographed uh, the Jackie fight scenes uh, was probably looking at uh, They Live, maybe, for some inspiration on that. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was cool, but yeah. And it's just zero. So, much, so much bad, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do it a favor then because I'm going to give it a point. Just because it's the only episode I found any joy in so far. Um, I enjoyed the fight scenes. That's all this was. There was some cool things in there. There was some stupid stuff in there. But I want to give it a point just for uh, not completely boring the shit out of me. And that says a lot. I mean, considering what we've asked, right? (laughs) Dude, considering what we've had to go through, you know, and the the level of... um, you sure, man? Because you, you had to watch Plo Koon's grandmother die. You sure about that? Sure about that point? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I'll give them a point. They, they, okay. they deserve a point for this one. They can have it. I'll let them have it. I might take it away later, but right now they'll have it. So, anyway, that was excellent news, man. Uh, a lot of great information there. Yes, so, uh, yes, we'll all be back together soon to discuss probably more Acolyte. I feel like we uh, might be talking House of the Dragon soon. I don't know when, but uh, we're, we're letting a few episodes get under the belt first. And we'll talk about it a little bit, maybe on the first half of it and then the second half of it, something like that. But until then, remember, guys, to always be excellent to each other. And Brian, Joel, and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Yep. You guys have a good one, and here comes your retcon. 